Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another fun video today. And we're going to go talk about, once again, my favorite and probably only Marvel comic I do read. And that would be Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows. And issue 12 was released last month. And it did not live up to standards. It was not good. And you'd think it's going to be great because... Um, I mean, I'm just a diehard fan of it. There were problems in all all the issues. I'm going to be honest. There were problems in all the issues, but we still loved it. It still remained great. This one, though, it wasn't there. It had a lot of problems, and we're going to get into it, and we're going to talk about the good things and the bad things about it. So let's just start it off with, once again, we're going to draw while we review, and today I'm going to end it. We're going to end this series with... Another, a picture of Annie Mae Parker with Normie Osborne. Aren't they cute together? I think they're adorable together. Okay, so let's just dive right in, shall we? So, as if you guys have been catching up or, or at least reading my review, <laughs> watching my reviews of the series, what we left off was that Normie Osborne, the son of Harry Osborne, was finally going to enact his revenge on the Spider-Man and his wife and everybody else. By pretty much uh, making a giant robot and attacking him. It made by Regent Tech to go... And as we discover in this series, it's in this issue, that it can steal powers thanks to Regent Tech. So it's slowly growing stronger with every person it attacks and defeats. Ugh, this pen is not good for this one. But as, but as we all know, Spider-Man's not going to go and sit down on this. Especially when his daughter's been kidnapped by a normie. And so it just dives right into to Peter. He's like running around trying to fight the the giant giant mecha monster and MJ is running around trying to find their kid and then suddenly uh something really cool happens. The X-Men come back. The X-Men, if you know it, they're like really prominent in the series. I love that. You you miss the X-Men. Everybody misses the X-Men and they're and it's very classy. 90s X-Men are there. It's got it's got all our favorites. You want to what? We're going to stop and just show that up. We're going to show that piece for everybody. Because it's really kind of cool. Um, here, see? Ta-da! The X-Men appear. And we got Iceman. And we got Wolverine. And we got Cyclops. And we got Jean Grey. And this brings up a little bit of an issue I have. I don't like the artist in this one. It probably would have been a more likable series but this guy this guy is the same guy from the last time and you guys know I wasn't a fan of his work I felt he wasn't draw he could not draw kids he couldn't he he had weird mouths like I'm not a great artist either I mean look at what I'm doing but um but there is a standard when you get into Marvel or the higher ups that I feel you need to bring the A game and I I I just don't see it with that, and I think they should have went with another artist. I'm sorry, dude. Whoever you are, uh, uh, level. Brian Level was it? Yeah, Brian Level. I'm really sorry. Um, I bet you were trying your hardest. I just, I just didn't like it. I'm really sorry. But um, yeah. So the whole entire story continues on with, with, whatever. They're they're fighting the giant. Goblin Mecha, because, you know, robots are cool or whatever. I mean, I like robots, but I don't like it right here. So it starts stealing their powers, and, and at least in this time, Spider-Man's pretty competent. He's, like, the only one that's competent at this moment. He's all like, we, guys, you really need to stop fighting the monster. The monster kind of, like, sucks out your powers, and it uses them. It, like, it literally takes away their powers and absorbs it into itself. I don't know how that works, but it does. And so, like, only Spider-Man, like, suddenly realized it, and he's like, everybody, stop, stop attacking the monster! And they still keep attacking. It's like, oh, thank you! Thank you so much for overpowering the monster with your, like, healing factor and psychic abilities! We just totally needed that! Thank you, world! And I'm like, Spider-Man's the only one competent in this moment. This sucks! It's, like, for him. And, uh, but I did enjoy, I mean, at least I felt, I was like, finally, we have a, this Spider-Man is just, like, having to deal with this all by himself. And then we get straight into what's happening with MJ and Liz Allen as they go and try and look for their kids and they get to the to the lab or whatever of Normie Osborne. And a weird thing is stated in there that just kind of like made me go, what? 
Uh, they rescue Annie. And when they're talking to her and her mom's like, oh my gosh, are you okay? Let's show that part. She's like, oh my gosh, are you all right? Oh my gosh, my kid and everything. And she goes, yeah, mom, I'm fine. Wait, what's with your outfit? Like literally right there, it's like, what's with your outfit, mom? It's creepy. What are you talking about? You've known she was wearing that suit. There's nothing in the artwork that depicts it like morphing or going nuts again. Cause that's a thing that has been stated that the, that she can't control the symbiote. She can't control it for very long. So when she goes overly emotional, it'll take over and start attacking people and becoming more violent. But it has no indication of that. It's not like, uh, like bleeding out ooze or whatever. It's not making a creepy tongue. It's not like attacking anybody. It's just chill. So why? Why are you, why are you saying, what's up with your suit, mom? You've seen it. You've seen it. There was a whole entire issue. Like, what was it? Issue nine that was you talking about the suit and how it creeped you out. How do you not recall that? Like, it, it just was weird to me and it was really upsetting that I was like, come on guys, put your continuity together. But. Uh, still, I digress. So, like, Liz and the and Mary Jane are like, oh no, he he, Normie's in the mecha suit. But they go to the next room, and Normie's like knocked down on the ground. They they learn that Normie like uh in the last issue, as I said, you know, like Normie walked away and he can't look back. Well, apparently he can. He actually did regret this. He left the room and he stated, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm tired of this. I don't want to hurt people. I don't want to be a terrible person. I'm very, I'm lonely and I don't want to be alone anymore. I'm tired of doing bad things. And he told that. And so he didn't get into the suit and it's like, but who, who's, who's driving it? And it's revealed to be Miss January. And we, I've always had suspicions that Miss January was doing stuff in the shadows. She was doing all this. And it seems more like she was the encouragement of Normie, because if we think about it, Normie didn't have a mother figure pretty much as Liz has come to realize. And and in those moments, she's like hugging her son and saying it's going to get better and she's going to try and be a better mother because she's let um, not only her fa her husband get consumed by the goblin curse, she has been consumed by it pretty much at this point as she's she's drawn her sorrows in booze and pretty much does not is not there for her son. And she's just like, I hate Spider-Man because he does all this. Let's uh, let's go and like kill him or something. It's like, yeah, you're you're as you, you got consumed by the curse as well. It's driven you into this like psychoticness. So pretty much, it's uh, Miss January is driving a, a Tempa Topa Goblin Lagan. <laughs> I heard that online once somewhere, and I thought it was funny. But uh, so. Pretty much is riding the giant mech and she's she's doing it and she states it's for Harry. But they don't really explain why. Like, how do you know Harry Osborne? It's already been stated that uh she she got into the family and was taking care of Normie by request of Liz, but we don't know anything else. She said I, I am very devoted to the family because um they helped me in a situation, but it's like, we don't know anything else. Like what situation? Like, why are you so devoted? Why do you want to help Harry so much? Like, like, were you dating him or something? Are you like part of the goblin cult or something? Like, I don't know. They don't really explain this. It's just, it's once again, another series that was rushed and it sucks that it is. Cause you see a lot of potential in a lot of these things. Like a lot of the the story, a lot of the stuff has a lot of potential, but they're rushing it. They're just pushing it out there. They're like, come on, get out of here. You can only do two issues for any story plot in this series because whoop de doo we don't know how to, how to do stuff. We're just jerks up above, I guess, because that series definitely needs to be more than just two issues for stories to get wrapped up because there's a lot of stuff that that should have been covered there was a lot of ground to cover throughout this whole entire series and they did not get through with it. But anyway, so the giant mecha suit is on the ridge and it's Miss January in there and she's like, I'm going to seek revenge on everybody. And and Mary Jane goes in as, as spinneret to help Peter and they both get blasted by the machine. So all their powers get sucked out. And pretty much uh, Annie as Spiderling is telling, telling Normie, I got to help my parents. You, you know the suit, right? You can't, I mean, you know the robot. You probably know how to stop. And he goes, I do. And, and they team up and she, and she uses his guidance to go into the robot and 
actually break it from the inside. And they, they have a long conversation, which is kind of cute, that she says, you're not going to be alone anymore. I'm going to be your friend and everything. And it's like, oh, that is cute. Because, like, I, I did I did feel they would be good friends and stuff. If you, if you read any of the MC2, where other versions of them are, it was... I mean, they're always supposed to have a relationship in some way because of their families are so closely tied. And they did a great one in that one where it was like, um, Normie was obsessed with ending the Goblin Curse, which meant, uh, killing the next inheritor of the Spider-Man mantle, which was Spider-Girl. And they did a really good story with that. You, you guys have to check that out. And it was during a time that she lost her powers and she's like talking Normie down saying like the Goblin, like you could, you could be who you want to be. This isn't like, I don't know, but it was just fantastic. And she manages to make him realize that what he's doing is wrong. And they become great friends later and he assists her and everything. It, it was fantastic. And she, she gained a huge crush on him, which was really cute too. And I was like, ah, he's a little bit too old for you, honey. But, uh, it was cute. It was a little cute thing. So yeah. So, they have this like kinship kind of thing that's going on that she says that she's going to be his friend. And, and so, so they managed to defeat the bad guy by, uh, it was a combination kind of thing of all the family and so forth, you know, combining powers and working on it. But yeah, they, they win in the end, of course, cause you know, it's Spider-Man is amazing family. So of course they're going to win. And Liz is like going to be a better mom and, She's, like, eternally grateful that uh, Miss January has been defeated. And to their luck, not everything in the machine was destroyed. And Normie reveals that there's this orb or item in there that absorbs ev all the superheroes and all their powers. And if they use it, they can gain their powers back to them. And he gives it to Spider-Man and apologizes for everything. And it, and it ends with a slightly cute picture on that little bit where, uh, I mean, it's sort of cute. With this little hug between the two of them. It's like, aww, because they're like, we can we can now be friends and you can have a good life. And I, I just, he can't draw kids. He can't draw kids. I'm sorry, Level. Um, I, I just don't like how you draw kids. Also, this was a kind of a fun thing. Um, Mary Jane, because her, her outfit was a symbiote. And because, well, the, the goblin, the mecha goblin, like, sucks up your powers. It sucked up the venom suit. So she has no... No, um, outfit. So instead they, they put webbing on her face, kind of like an old montage to the original Spider-Man comic. If you, if you ever see that one, he, uh, Peter wore pretty much a bunch of webbing over his head so nobody could see it. It is very nostalgic to that to me. I'm like, oh, that's cute. And, uh, yeah. So it ends at that point that, that it ends like with eight years later that the family has decided to give her her own suit and she goes out on adventures with them and uh that that's it that's it it's um i just um it, it's it's okay but that whole entire series did have a lot of ground to cover we still didn't get conclusions to a lot of things it was just like oh look at this fun side plot we're never gonna talk about it ever again yeah and stuff and I'm like wait no I want to know about about like Annie's friends I want to know more about this Stephanie Kim we only knew like three minutes about and we, she, she slightly references them I thought this was going to be like slightly important are we ever going to talk about like like her actually teaming up with her family are we ever going to talk about how the symbiote suit works and like like what they've learned when they've when they defeated it. Are we going to ever talk about that? Are we ever going to talk about this? Are we ever going to talk about like, like their jobs or anything? Nope. Just, just, uh, just move on. Great. That's just what I needed. So there was a lot left unsaid. I don't know if they're going to cover it in the next stuff, but it does disappoint me that there was, they, they could have done so much and they just decided we're going to do a time skip. I think that was more of the suits up above that were like, we're going to, we're going to, make a time skip and I'm like don't make a time skip come on we already have like teenage spider girls and stuff I I want to see the young kiddo one I want to see spiderling as a kid because it's it's different it's new and they're like no we're gonna do that and and, uh, and I slightly also understand because then you can start like little romance subplots which are really cute and fun but 
I didn't want that. But I will say this. There was another interview. Remember how I told you that I was unsure about the new writer because I wasn't told, I didn't see an interview by her? She's finally gotten on to an interview uh, sometime after I made that video. and <laughs> I've just been lazy and I haven't told about it. And uh, she 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 helped calm me down and stuff. Some of the stuff she stated was sounds pretty good. She's going to do a lot of stories about the Sinister Six. She wants to do like all these cool stuff about it. And I'm like, you want to know what? That's what we need. We need something big like that. There's been a little bit of teaser art running around and and the artist, the new artist, she's really enthusiastic about it. Um, he used to work on Transformers. A lot of the, the my friends and stuff says, oh, he's great. And uh, he is really pushing for it. And I like that. He encourages people. It's like, please pick it up. I'm working my hardest. We're all working our hardest on this series. So yeah, I'm going to stick around and I think uh, it'll be better. I mean, it didn't leave off the way I wanted it to, but it still left off on a pretty good, nice note. I think it was just really the art that upset me a little bit. I'm sorry, Level. You are a good artist, but not the way I wanted. But other than that, I think I'm going to leave you with this pretty picture. And I'll see you around.